Thanks for joining me here. Today I'm going to be using my fabulous waterfall cup from Spontaneous Brian. Links to where you can get this version of this cup will be in the description below. Also in the description below you will find the links to a couple of my friends, Camille from Camille Amoy Art and Nate from Nate Bright Art. The three of us are doing a weekly premiere train together on Tuesday evenings. We thank you for joining us here today and if you're here with us on the evening of the premieres, we welcome you. We're excited to have you here and we all really love interacting with you in the live chat. So definitely catch us whenever you can while we're premiering so that you can interact with us and we will have the enjoyment of interacting with you also. So again, you'll be able to find the links to Camille and Nate's beautiful art presentations in my description below. And remember to mark it on your calendars to join us on Tuesday evenings if your schedule permits. And of course, you can always catch us on the replay if you cannot be with us at the time of premiere. So I'm doing a ring pour this evening the colors that I am using are Arteza Pearl Sage Green, Arteza Pearl Arctic Blue. I'm also using Folk Art Color Shift Silver Flash, and I have a couple of custom made dark blues. Of course, I also have white, and that is made from Artist Loft, and it is blended with a little bit of Satin Enamel by Bear. And of course, all of my paints are mixed with Floetrol. There's no silicone in my paints. I utilize different types of paints to get interactivity rather than use silicone. So I really wanted to go for a really dark ink blue color. Now right there you'll see that blue does not look really super dark, right? But remember my friends, paint usually will dry darker than what it looks like when it's wet. And so what I actually did is I did a, cu a couple of swatch samples where I mixed up some paint, I put some dabs on a clean white surface, allowed it to dry, and then saw what color I was left with. And I custom kept, I kept custom blending actually until the dried result was what I was after. So always keep this in mind. If you're looking for a particular color in the dried result, go ahead and do some test samples and let them dry. Again, you're better off testing on something that is white because if you didn't get a thick blob of paint on there and you have other color underneath it, it could actually alter the final result that you're seeing. Now, you might want to test differently if you do plan to use a different color background. For example, if you plan to use a black base in your background, well, you may want to try your test swatches on that as well, or in relation to some of the other colors that you're using in the pour. I'm also using two different shades of copper. One of my shades of copper is by Deco Art, and it is from the Metallics line. And I also used a copper from Amsterdam. The reason I chose to use two different coppers from two different brands is the paints interact very differently. With Deco Art, you're more likely to get cell activity, but you can also just get an overall type of sheen going across your paints. Or even if you don't get that result, they will interact with the paints in a different way than if you use some of the other brands. With experimentation, of course, you'll start to see for yourself what you're going to get. So sometimes, depending on what I want from my paints, I might choose to use, such as in the case of this painting, two different shades of copper. I will oftentimes do this with golds as well. Let's face it, we know that we love our deco art, metallics, or extreme sheen paints for the results that we get from them, but sometimes we also want a different type of appearance from the golds or the silvers or the the bronzes or the coppers or whatever it is that we're using then we sometimes get from the deco art so keep this in mind because you can always add in the same color but with a different brand additionally to your deco art brand so that you can get 
both types of the results that you want. So what happened here, I'm really sorry, my overhead camera, which is on a phone, turned off partway through. I was starting to fill an additional cup because my waterfall cup was not big enough to hold enough paint for the canvas size that I'm using. This is a 20 by 20 inch canvas. I was filling my additional cup so that I was going to pour that down first and then I was going to pour from my waterfall cup after that. Well, was. I actually did do that. And because I've had my phone camera turn off several times and I know some of my artist friends have been saying the same thing lately, I have been in the habit of checking it every few minutes. Thankfully, I did. I was able to find out that it had turned itself off. Unfortunately, we missed the parts where I was filling that additional little cup, which is not the biggest deal in the world, but unfortunately we missed the pouring out of the paint. And because this canvas is so large in the painting area that I utilized, I was not able to set up another camera from another angle, and so I just don't even have that as a backup. So I'm very sorry that we had to miss the pouring out of the paint, but isn't this beautiful? Look at how this is flowing across the canvas right now. I really love watching the paint open up. And just go ahead and let me know in the comments below what some of the favorite things are that you really enjoy watching or experiencing when you do your own paintings. For me, I really love watching the paint come out in the cup, so it's extra disappointing for me that that footage was not captured. So happy I've been in the habit though of checking that the phone is still on. If you're using a phone, I really recommend it. I've been hearing several of my friends mentioning lately that they've been having this problem. I don't know what is going on with that. I'm sure that they, like me, are always uh, taking out the footage from their devices, opening up that space. I always do that. I'm always in the habit of making sure that my devices have plenty of clean open space. And so it's that's not what's happening in my case. And I'm reasonably sure that's not happening for my friends either. But for whatever reason, these devices have been just turning themselves off mid filming stream. So if you're using a phone, double check to make sure that that is still recording for you periodically in your painting process. I've so far not noticed this problem with my iPad, but I'm not able to get over shot, overhead shots with my iPad. I've not found a device situation where I can suspend it easily within the painting space that I have. I'm indicating I'm actually going to open this up by tilting this to the right in just a moment. I really want to open up those beautiful copper rings to that other side and where we're starting to see those dark blue little type of cells over there at this point to the left we're seeing that. And so I'm really going to just take this off to the right. I'm going to open all of that up, everything that's to the left over and those beautiful lighter rings that we got partly in play because of my white and then that silver color shift. That is such a beautiful, beautiful color, front, my friends. I really recommend it. I wasn't really sure about getting it when I saw it on the shelf at the Hobby Lobby near me, but there was something that just kept calling to me about that color. I actually did not pick it up right away. I just, I, it just kept kind of haunting me in my mind after I'd seen it on the shelf and there was only one bottle present at my location and after a couple days of just it playing on my mind I had to run back and get it and I am so glad I did. It is a color that I believe I will always want to keep in stock because I am so pleased with the way that it interacted and played with the various colors in this painting and again it's something that my camera may not pick up as well as what the eye can see in actuality, but it is absolutely stunning. I really recommend getting that color and trying it out for yourself. I think you'll be 
very pleased with the results. So look at this. I'm really loving how all of these lines are opening up. I'm really starting to love the composition that's emerging and the flows. I also do have some close-up shots and displayed result shots coming up a little bit later in the video and then after I show you the displayed results of this painting I ha have a little surprise to show you. This really reminds me of something like a Grand Canyon or some images that I have seen where there are a lot of beautiful rock type formations that are kind of interweaving with each other, making little tunnel type passageways that you could walk through. I've seen some beautiful, beautiful imagery and I couldn't help but think back to some of those images that I'd seen as I watched this painting unfold. I just love there's so much beauty there are so many distinct and different things that are happening and yet I love how they interplay beautifully with each other and so here I'm just adding in some extra bits down in the corner so it's uh, it's I think quite typical for people when they first start doing acrylic pouring to take your pores really so far down over those edges to get those corners completely covered that a lot of times what happens is that the, comp the composition on the main part of the canvas sometimes suffers for that and so what many people have been doing and and if you haven't known of this yet take note of this because it can really help you and the final results of your paintings but what we've more typically started to do is stop that tilting process while what is on the front of your canvas is still pleasing to you and then taking a spoon and just either picking up some of the drippings off of the surface below very carefully so you want to scoop the the spoon underneath them so that you're still keeping the lines and the different colors as they are you don't want to mix those together and make them just one solid color or muddy them up and then you can just drizzle them over the corners and that way you can finish off your corners and get an overall beautiful result but you can still have the most ideal composition that you had loved probably before you over tilted to try and cover the corners in that way and you can still keep that beautiful composition because let's face it my friends that's what we're really seeing most of we're not really going to be seeing down on those corner edges really or all that much so it's better to come back in and doctor those up separately and really just go for keeping the composition that really pleases you so there i'm adding those ribbons up there on the corner and I'm, I apologize that it was not fully in frame, but 
like I said, I end up covering that up later anyway, but it's something that I did after the painting fully dried. And just keep that in mind too, you can always modify your paintings after they've dried. Sometimes you literally will notice things that really didn't work or didn't work as well as what you thought. And you can go back in and modify those or sometimes I will notice something even while the painting is wet I will know even then that I'm going to embellish or add maybe a little dark point or a little light point somewhere in the painting to make it just stand out a little bit better and I sometimes will know even before it's dried that I'm going to do those type of embellishments and these are all fine so just go ahead and also keep those in mind if they're something that you have not been aware of yet within your own painting journey or if you have started to know about them but haven't taken on trying it yet i really recommend that you try it and here's another little tip once your painting is dry if you start to embellish and you decide you don't like it you can always wash that off if the paint is still wet and you can get it off and go right back down to what you'd been left with in your dried result and you can take another stab at it again. The key is to get it off while it's still wet but you have some flexibility so don't be worried about potentially ruining a painting and liking it less than what your dried result is even though there's something bothering you within that dried result that you kind of do want to go for seeing if you can get something a little bit better because you do have that flexibility. So here we go with some of these close-up shots. Look at these beautiful, beautiful things that are happening. I love all these ribbons that are crisscrossing over to the right. I love these copper ribbons that go up through the painting and those blue little cells that opened up within it. I love the blue patch next to that. See, I'm pointing an arrow there that I did not really like that too much. I didn't really notice that again though until it was really dry. And I really love this lighter portion over to the left, even with those few beautiful little cells coming through it. It's so delicate and beautiful. Let me know in the comments what you like about this or anything that you'd like to interject or ask. Please feel free to go ahead and leave that below. And here is the painting dry and you'll see the modified corner coming up. Now my lighting was not that great here this does actually look a little prettier in actuality and uh, and you'll see in the displayed results that that corner just looks a lot better now within the flow of the rest of the composition look at those beautiful beautiful subtle lines running through there i love it and all of the over layering of the beautiful colors that's one thing i really like about using this waterfall cup is I get a lot of beautiful overlayering in the colors in a way that I don't normally really get if I'm just using a regular plastic cup for my ring pours. And look at look at just all these beautiful, beautiful, subtle details. Oh, they're just beautiful. I'm so pleased with this. And I'm very pleased with my waterfall cup. It has been allowing me to get very different and very exciting, beautiful results than I've been able to get with just using a regular cup. Now, it is just different, so you might still enjoy the results from a regular cup, but it's fun to just mix it up and see what different textures and results you can get by using different little gadgets and toys. Look at this beautiful displayed result. I love this painting. So now here, my friends, is my next little surprise. I'm just gonna give you a fun, quick little ring pour. I am using a regular plastic cup here. This is a smaller canvas. And I just wanted to throw this in for your viewing enjoyment. It's a, it's a fun little piece. The colors are very bright. I've mixed a lot of spring colors. There are a couple of Arteza colors. One is Pearl Amaranth Red and everything else is pretty much a blend except i do have arteza prussian green and everything else honestly is custom blended and it's just very springy colors 
And so I'm putting some gold down because I'm hoping that it'll pop through and give me some cells. Sometimes that works for me, sometimes it doesn't. It's always highly disappointing when it doesn't because of course I feel like I've wasted the paint. I could have put that in a ring or, or a layer, for example, excuse me, not a ring, but a layer in the cup for a ring pour. So uh, I don't like it when I don't get the cells for having done it, but sometimes I do. And then of course it's extremely fun when it works out. So I'm just pouring this out. And again, I did have some overhead footage on this painting, but for some reason I'm not locating it on the overhead for this particular piece. It might've been one of those situations where the camera did turn off because the rest of the overhead footage for later in the painting is there and so it might have just been you know a camera glitch situation but I did do this painting I actually did this painting last spring to be honest with you I did nine spring paintings last year and I've only so far shown I think a couple of them on my channel so I will be editing some more of that footage and then just showing you those as we go along the way and of course I have some other beautiful, beautiful paintings to show you. And again, my friends, our normal standing Tuesday night painting train with Camille and Nate, my lovely friends. Definitely look for their links in the description below. And uh, we're so happy to go on this train ride with you and to show you our beautiful, beautiful art that we have so much fun and get so much enjoyment from creating and sharing with you and we are so happy to have our train now and to bring our presentations to you in this way where we can all start to have a lot more fun together oh i love i don't know about you but i actually really like watching the paint drip off the edge of a canvas i find it strangely satisfying talk about oddly satisfying things i don't even know why i find that fascinating and lovely to watch it's very strange to me that i even find it to be that way but i do let me know if uh, you also enjoy that maybe i should try to capture more of that footage maybe i should really try and set up a recording device to be able to capture that more often let me know if you would enjoy that so there i am not only touching up the edges but i'm scraping off the underside so remember to always be doing that you want to be scraping off those drippings until they stop dripping this helps to keep those edges of the upper side of your canvas in much better condition because you are reducing the amount of pull of how much paint is actually coming off uh, that you would get if you let those drippings just continue to fall on their own. So isn't this pretty though? The colors are so bright and vivid. I really love it. It just reminds me of the beautiful splashing colors that we get in spring, especially if you live somewhere like I currently do, where you really get four distinct seasons, or if you're living somewhere tropical, because I've been in some tropical places and uh, I know some people live in tropical places. Anyway, flowers, flowers blooming and splashing across the scene. I really love the vibrancy of flowers. I enjoy flowers very much. And this painting just reminds me of those beautiful splashes of color, flowers that splash across the scenery, the gardens, the vases, wherever they may be, for the visual beauty of our eyes to enjoy. Let me know if you love flowers as much as I do. So I just love that. To me, spring is just lovely. It's love, it's happiness, it's joy, joy, because I just find such joy in the beautiful colors. All right, and so coming up ahead, I do have close-ups of this as well as a displayed result for your viewing pleasure. And again, I appreciate that you've been here with me at this video, whether you've been here at the time of premiere or whether you're watching on the replay, I appreciate it. And again, consider subscribing if you haven't already and clicking the bell. And make sure you also subscribe to Camille and to Nate. We will all love to play together with you and have you join us 
whenever we do our presentations. And again, we do really enjoy chatting with you in that live chat. So definitely come at the time of premieres if you possibly can. Look at these beautiful lines and flows. I really like how this came out. I like how there are so many distinct things going on. And yet, once again, they all interplay and work really well together within the total flow of the composition. I just think that is so pretty. So thank you again, and I will see you around my channel. And if you're here at the time of premiere, let's all go on to Nate's video now. And I'll see you back around my channel again soon. Take care.